So far in the book of Job, we've learned that Job is blameless and upright. That's Job 1.1. 1, 1. And that in all this, all this, Job didn't crack under the pressure. He did not sin or charge God with wrong. That's Job 1.22. Here we are at the end of this, and we're doing a lot less of me talking and a lot more of allowing God's words to stand for themselves. In this particular chapter, the Lord is describing a fire-breathing lizard beast. This would lead us to believe that there used to be fire-breathing lizard beasts. We know that there were lizard beasts. It's questionable as to whether or not some of them breathe, uh, breathed, broth, <laughs> breathed fire. Although there are cultures, pretty much all cultures from the past, speak of fire-breathing lizard beasts. And they weren't all in communication with one another the way that we are today. Although, the fact is, is that a lie certainly gets its way all the way around the world before the truth is even putting its shoes on. Nonetheless, here's a question to think about during this discourse. If God is describing a literal fire-breathing lizard beast, why? Why did he create it such that there are fire-breathing lizard beasts? Is he trying to get across a point that can't be seen by the flesh? Is he singing about something spiritual? Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook? Or snare his tongue with a line which you lower? Can you put a reed through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he make many supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? Will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him as a servant forever? Will you play with him as with a bird? Or will you leash him for your maidens? Will your companions make a banquet for him? Will they apportion him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Remember the battle. Never do it again. Indeed, any hope of overcoming him is vain. Shall one not be overwhelmed at the sight of him? Shall one not? No one is so fierce that he should dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand against me? Who has preceded me that I should pay him? Everything under heaven is mine. I will not conceal his limbs, his mighty power, or his graceful proportions. Who can remove his outer coat? Who can approach him with a double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face with his terrible teeth all around? His rows of scales are his pride, shut up tightly as with a seal. One is so near another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together and cannot be parted. His sneezings flash forth light in his eyelids, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lights, sparks of fire shoot out, smoke goes out of his nostrils. As from a boiling pot and burning rushes, his breath kindles coals, and a flame goes out of his mouth. Strength dwells in his neck, and sorrow dances before him. The folds of his flesh are joined together. They are firm on him and cannot be moved. His heart is as hard as stone, even as hard as the lower millstone, when he raises himself up, the mighty are afraid. Because of his crashings, they are beside themselves. Though the sword reaches him, it cannot avail, nor does spear, dart, or javelin. He regards iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones become like stubble to him. Darts are regarded as straw. He laughs at the threat of javelins. His undersides are like sharp potsherds. He spreads pointed marks in the mire. He makes the deep boil like a pot, he makes the sea like a pot of ointment. He leaves a shining wake behind him. One would think the deep had white hair. 
on earth there is nothing like him which is made without fear. He beholds every high thing. He is king over all the children of pride. I want for you to think about this thing just for a second. Well, I want you to think about it for more than a second, but on your own time. I want you to consider what Yeshua said regarding what it's like to be man. Anybody who wasn't for him is against him. And anybody who isn't for him, he plainly said, they are the children of the father of lies. They are the children of the father of destruction. They are the children of the father of twisted truths, of lawlessness. Consider, if he is their father, and they will not repent. What does that mean for us when we understand that his heart is as hard as stone? My friends, Yeshua is salvation. I want you to see past that. You've been taken up out of the ocean onto the ship. You've been anointed with oil. You've been fed. You've been given a warm bed. That is salvation. When you wake up with your strength, don't neglect to do the work that keeps the ship afloat. The Savior bless the work of your hands. Amen.